Hello again my friend, and welcome to another Let's Talk About Games video. In this one in particular, we're going to be going through Call of Cthulhu and giving it a good old review loop. That's right, we're going downhill to puns. Now, it's time to actually get cracking talking about Cthulhu and a very brief outline of the history for you. Cthulhu was first ever mentioned by H.P. Lovecraft back in the 1920s during a short story. There's obviously been many other authors that have then jumped on top of the Cthulhu mythos. And more recently, we do have the pen and paper roleplay game that has been published called, again, Call of Cthulhu. Now, just to make things confusing, we also have a video game made by Cyanide Studios called Call of Cthulhu, and that's what we're here to talk about and have a peep at today. So, what have, what have Cyanide have been doing quite a lot recently, haven't they? They've recently come out with Space Hulk Tactics, a bunch of Tour de France games, and, well, Deathwing as well. So, Terminators, Gene Stealers, and people in Lycra, all the way over to Supernatural Horror Murder Mystery, which is where we're at today during the Call of Cthulhu game. I think to get started in talking about the game, I'm going to start with graphics today because obviously when we load into a game, this is one of the first things that we see. The actual textures, the graphics and the immersion into a setting. Now, it is very safe to say that graphically this game does feel a little bit dated. And I don't mean it's set back in the 1920s, I mean simply that the graphics of this do look like they could come from a PlayStation 3 port. But, that being said, the graphics are consistently of this style. You'll notice a fairly wide colour palette of fairly bold colours in certain settings. Green obviously being a very strong theme, there is a little bit of a lore reason as to why there's a lot of this colour associated with Cthulhu. I don't want to give you any spoilers for that, but the game is very much um, thematically in tune, I would say, very consistent. The tunnels and the buildings and the, the areas you explore are all congruent with each other and all somewhat fitting. It looks quite aesthetically pleasing, assuming you can get over the fact that this doesn't look like a AAA title. There will be the occasional place where you're in a cave or something of the sorts and you think, well, hang about, why, why is this tile a little bit square in a cave? There is the occasional bit that seems to perhaps be a, a little bit rushed or could do with a little bit of polish. But if you can get over this artistic style of a game that looks and feels somewhat dated, I do feel that the graphics are certainly somewhat passable. For me personally, it takes me back to almost remembering when I used to play roleplay games like Fable, you know, back when computer games were good and not crap. Um, it brings me back to that sort of point in time, and it actually makes me gives me a little bit of a warm, nostalgic feeling. Well, for others, they may just feel it's simply dated. The character models themselves are of a sort of a similar elk. They are looking somewhat dated and a little bit blocky in places in terms of their animations in particular, but aesthetically they all fit the bill. They all do nicely. Really, it seems like the game is more a series of caricatures instead of characters. Everyone seems to be playing their roles of the, the angry person, the drunk person, the you name it, that's in it. But it's all again nice and congruent with the aesthetics. I hate whiskey. Certainly passable, but you will see every now and again, much like with the actual settings, the occasional character whose teeth just simply don't seem to fit in their mouth very well, the occasional mobilising or animation, rather, of a drunk person who's waving around in a rather consistently preordained pattern that just looks a bit odd, but it's one of these things where I think the more you look for these, uh, let's say, minutiae that could have been ironed out, the more you will find. But if you're simply sat back absorbing, a lot of it will probably pass under the radar. It really depends on how much you want to nitpick with this. As a small indie studio, it's fair to say their studio is probably a fraction of the size of the graphical animation team alone that made the previous Mass Effect games. So expecting them to have comparable levels of graphics, I understand, is pretty unreasonable. That that being said, I do think there is one sneaking animation in particular where a certain police officer goes into a certain tunnel and it really, really needed to be redone. But for the most part, it's pretty good looking. Now, the most important thing about the game, I really feel, is actually the audio, because although we have this visual setting around us, the actual audio for me is one of the key pieces to get you feeling that tension of a decent murder mystery. So let's start off with the actual quality of the voice acting itself. Hey, be careful. Let's get him another drink. He's dry. My head 
In my bar, we don't serve troublemakers. Again, keeping in line with the almost caricature stereotyping of the game, the main character himself is acting a, as a bit of a hammy detective. Everything he says is with the same inflection and cadence, so he starts off every sentence sounding authoritative and then slowly trails off to sound like he's thoughtful. It's very, very sort of Adam West, and it's pretty good. It works okay. Some people may see it as, quote, bad acting because it is a little bit of the hammy side, and many of the other people within the game also fit a fairly sort of hammy acting style. But again, I think if you're expecting something that's a little bit more rustic around the edges, yeah, I think it actually kind of works. There are discrepancies and there are inconsistencies. Occasionally the volume jumps up, jumps down. The occasional line feels mismatched. But again, I really feel it's something if you're looking for nits to pick, you will find some, almost certainly. There is a little bit of refinement that could be done, but... The voice acting is easy to follow, it's well enough written that the story and what's happening is fine, the characters are easy to remember, and overall, I think the overall net effect of it is of a fairly adequate quality, but certainly not something I would say is quite comparable to AAA, but a damn good job, I think, for an indie studio. Now, the audio quality otherwise, in terms of the background animation uh, noises and the background creaks, the clangs, the things that will occur while you're talking to people or exploring settings, actually think are quite well done. There's a very good sense of atmosphere created by, well, whoever did the sound design for this game, and I'd have to say, pretty damn good job. There's, again, going to be the occasional sound like a foghorn, which for me just sounded very un-foghorn-like and a little bit diluted, but for the most part, it's actually one of the better things, I think. Now, in terms of audio, there is one main thing I would bring up here, and this won't be a deal breaker for some, but when I mention the audio jumps up and down a little bit, it really does jump up by a few decibels and down by a few decibels quite inconsistently. Going from first person to third person talking can really see a shift in volume. For me, it's quite jarring and I found it to be, well, it has actually detracted from some of the conversations as it's just felt wrong. But again, that's someone that also does a lot of audio editing and things like that in their spare time. So maybe I'm listening in a little bit too much, looking for things to nitpick. But I would say that there is a little bit of an issue there for me. And it's something that if you're listening to and you pick up on stuff like that and it grates on you, it may it may well knock off a few points from their score for you. But... I think perhaps most relevant now is we're going to talk about how we actually use the voice acting in the game because conversations are done and you're going to have a lot of conversations in a game like this with various AI throughout the game. Well, well, a little mouse has got lost on our turf. What gave you the crazy idea to come onto my turf? This is done using the age-old classic token conversation wheel. You have a bunch of choices on it and you choose which question you would like to ask. The age-old classic, and it works very well for the game. It gives you numerous different choices and you get to choose what you ask. What makes this a little bit more interesting in this game and a system I really like is some of these choices will be tailored to and based on certain skills you have. We're going to come back to the skills later in terms of game progression, but you can choose to excel at certain things, be it psychology, investigation, medicine. And then if you go for one of these options and you have a good score, you may well get a successful result and that will perhaps net you a little bit more information, which may have an impact on the following events. This is very, very nicely done. I like how it works because basically when you get a bit of information or don't get a bit of information, you get the impression that there was something maybe that you missed or something you'd like to do again. It's a bit like playing the Telltale games of The Walking Dead, where once you've played through, you just, you're just you left wondering, what if I didn't bring this person here? Or what if I asked that person to stand there instead of here? What would have happened? Which is a really nice feeling to have when playing a roleplay game and helps to give you a little bit of a sense of replay value. In terms of the wheels themselves and the actual options available within the conversations, it does feel like the player has a sense of autonomy and it also feels like you do have some control over the actual outcome of situations. doesn't feel too scripted as there is a fair bit of choice and you get presented with a lot of A or B situations. 
And that's where I'd really describe the the narrative of this game. It forks off at several locations. Never truly being open world, you're generally given an A or a B choice either in conversation or in action. So exploring a map, for example, you may have a choice of going behind a shed or trying to create a diversion at the front of a shed, for example. You may have the choice of telling someone to stay with you or stay behind. But it's nice to have them because really it prevents it from feeling like a pure railroad and feeling like, well, maybe there's a little bit of replay value here. In terms of the actual voice acting too, I'd like to bring a little bit of awareness to the self-narration because this is a very, very important thing for the game. The main character talks to himself a lot. This roast. What strange creature has flesh like this? This place is for the head of the family, Charles Hawkins. And that's not weird, it's not creepy, it's really, really helpful when you find a clue that not only the character says, aha, I found a clue. The boy was probably here, smashed his plate on the floor. That's very interesting. He also then explains why it's interesting, and it shows you his beliefs are slowly unfolding and his realisation of the events slowly unfolding, and it really helps to keep you on the same page. Rather than finding a clue and having it really ambiguous and having you have to piece the puzzles together it's normally quite obvious and he will do a lot of or at least a good portion of that work for you it really allows this game to be something you can sit back relax and sort of tune on in have a little bit of control over the story and just sail along if you're after something where there is a lot of actual mystery where you're having to do a lot of work you want to go something more like return of the obra din where you're actually going to have to make notes and do some some pretty big sort of brain teasers to figure out what's going on this you can sit back relax find all the clues in a room and your character is going to explain what they think of is going on but it's nicely done the tempo is nice it, it gives you an extra little bit of incentive to look around for clues as well when you find a little bit of paper it saves you reading the whole bloody thing if he simply says uh -huh. she was taking some medicine i wonder why it's pretty good now in terms of actual game mechanics the game itself is obviously involving a lot of exploration and conversation but there are other things to this as well Aside from just simply hunting for things to find and little clues, which are always highlighted, by the way, whenever you go near one, there'll be a little bling or come up on the screen. So it's really hard to miss stuff in this game. Even if you go or don't invest into the perk that makes hidden stuff more obvious, it's all obvious once you get into a certain range anyway. But within the game, there are also other mechanics, including, well, sneaking, kind of, and shooting. Sneaking basically is breaking line of sight. And this is one of those things that's thrown into the game to probably make it feel a little bit more diverse. Every now and again, you'll have to hide from something. You'll have some of these really annoying line of sight games. And this is something that I think some people will like and some people will detest. For me, I... Felt that the puzzle for the sneaking underground, I'm not going to give any spoilers, bit was okay, was all right, but I really try and avoid games that have these sorts of hide behind this box when they're there, then move to here, hide behind another. No, I could do away with that, no thank you. But fortunately, it's only a small feature of the game, something done every now and again. It's not enough to put me off, and if you really don't like it, I think you can still stomach and move through because you're still exploring the story while in these events. But I think we will, and I have already seen a few reviews pr crop in that the sneaking and the shooting feel fairly basic. And it's fair to say that the actual basic mechanics themselves are very simple. You just block line of sight. There's no Tom Clancy actual hiding mechanic. There's no third person peeping around a door. You actually have to sort of peep your head around a little bit to see what's going on. It's not a problem. I think it breaks up the gameplay fairly nicely in places, but at, at times... It is just something I'd rather actually just be unfolding the story. Now, one of the other major mechanics in this game, which you will be making a lot of use of, is the ability to reconstruct scenes within your mind using the available clues. Now, the way this happens and the way this is portrayed to the character is you will press a couple of buttons to enter in a sort of an imaginary state of the scene. You will then look around the room, find various things and piece together bit by bit, a, a reconstruction as to what you think happened. Now, some people I've noted have seen this as some form of superpower or some sort of weird supernatural concoction. I think for me, it's simply best explained as his mental imagery 
of what is going on or what he believes to have happened. It's honestly, I feel, a nice touch and again adds another little dynamic and a way of storytelling things that the character has not experienced personally. It's a nice touch, it's fairly easy to use and comfortable and the character does a good job of narrating as he goes to keep you well in the loop. So, moving on from here, I think we're now onto the actual phobia and insanity mechanisms. These are other gameplay mechanics which have been thrown in to make the, make the game a little bit more interesting. Insanity is something that I absolutely love. Basically, the more crap that you find out about the amount of shit that's going down here, the more nuts you're going to get. This will give you phobias, this will make you have to run away from things to, to basically not have a panic attack. You're not going to be able to fight certain things if you're having a panic attack, so let's say you're, you've got claustrophobic as a actual in-game mechanic, which can happen, that can be one of your phobias. When you're hiding, it means you kind of only have 15 seconds you can hide for before you have a panic attack and you have to jump out. So some pretty interesting mechanics to make the gameplay a little bit more interesting. These basically progress as you go along, and they also help determine the ending. So if you're batshit crazy by the end of this game because you've seen a lot of weird shit, well, the ending is going to reflect that. Again, no spoilers. Again, if you're fairly sane by the end of it, maybe you've not had too much to drink, you've kept your kept your nose out of a lot of the weird stuff going on and you're just simply plugging on through the ordinary stuff, well, to be fair, different endings going to actually make sense for that. And again, it allows for a little bit more replay value and I think it's a nice mechanic to have very, very fitting for the game. And a lot of roleplay games have these mechanics and they struggle to translate them into actual video games. I think this was a really nice way of doing it. There's also a little bit of customization to be done in terms of skill points. So when you progress through the game, you get extra skill points. Some of them will be upgraded through finding items. So when you find occult items and when you find medicine books, you can basically get some extra points to invest into these skills. But for the rest, you actually get the choice. And again, this all feeds into that whole replay mechanic because these choices will potentially allow you to get access to different things, different pieces of information regarding the story, different bits and bobs. And there is a little bit of a risk here, because if you, sometimes you feel like you're missing out on something that you really needed, it can be a bit frustrating as a player. For example, very early in the game, so it's not a big spoiler, I was trying to open a hatch, I failed the strength test. It's a little bit annoying, but it's fine, because there's an alternative route available to you as a character at all times. So it's never going to leave you stuck in the mud. You can simply try something. If it doesn't work, eh, fine, you'll do the other thing instead. But it's a nice system to have, and I think, again, it all feeds into this extra sort of replay mechanic and replayability that the game has going for it. Next, I think, and lastly, we're going to talk a little bit about the actual story itself. Your choices, the plot, the discovery, the, the, overall, the overall sensation you get as a player when rocking on through this game. I have to say, this has actually been the best part of it for me. I think the everything from the graphics to the writing to the audio to the gameplay mechanics, it all fits together nicely to make a good game. It's not a great game. It's a little bit rough around the edges, and that's mainly in terms of it maybe could have just done with a little bit more on it. But I think, again, the same could be said of many games. But the important thing is, as a player, and I'm not saying this will apply to you, but as for myself, I have been able to play this through, get my head into the story, get my head into the atmosphere, and enjoy the game, and look forward to finding out more from the actual narrative. And that, I think, is basically what you need to say is a RPG successful? If you want to play it more to figure out what's happening next, then the game's done a good job. What the developers are going to be wrestling with, unfortunately, though, is it is priced at AAA rating. I think it's 40 British pounds right now. Putting this game in terms of uh, sort of financial investment from a player up against a bunch of AAA titles, I think that is something to think about. Is it good value for money? That's something that only you can answer because it really depends if you're going to like the game. At the moment though, I would say this is a good game. I've enjoyed playing it. I wouldn't like to tell you if you would enjoy it too, but I think hopefully from the video you should be able to make your mind up yourself. So hopefully you feel a little bit better equipped now to make a decision as to if this game is for you or not. And also on that note, if you feel that this series of YouTube videos is for you or not, feel free to hit me a comment down below, press a like button, share it with a friend if they're thinking of buying the game. Hopefully it helps them out too. Guys, you've been wonderful. Remember to smash the subscribe button, click the bell so you don't miss any of the new videos. And I'll see you next time. Take care.